How's it going everybody? Eddie Kernan for Rexy Lab. Welcome to the Guitar Murray. I started this thing March 19th of 2022. It is currently early January 2023. I couldn't even finish this thing for a birthday present for myself. Here is where we were last. So if we look right here, we can see that some of these cracks that were left from the impact they're definitely there are still clear lines in there but they're all covered up you know what i can live with it i just didn't want the big bash there it's not there maybe i could have got those lines out if i tried to melt them in with a little bit of acetone but you know what i will save that for a much much goofier guitar i'm gonna put this over with the neck because it's time to focus on the electronics in the actual hell were these people thinking a wire nut a wire nut? Really? Man, I need these little mini toggles. I simply must have them. I have to have them. The rest of this thing can go to the wayside. Now these pickups that came in the guitar, I'll keep this 81 hanging around. It's always good to have an 81. And you know what? This thing looks like it's in really good shape. These uh, J200s, let's throw them in there and see if there's anything that i may need them for in the future fortunately we can see i got a new j50 right here i also have a couple new j200s now before i go installing these things i'm definitely going to be testing them there's also a lot of filth going on here so you know what let's just get to it and start cleaning for anybody that doesn't know if you got a scratchy pot or a funky switch a little squirt of this deoxit will usually take care of it. You can also use the electrical contact cleaner that you get at like Lowe's or Home Depot. Awful lot of oxidization on a lot of these parts. These springs are just powdery and gross. I'm guessing that this guitar had an exceptionally hard life. Makes me happy that I have it now. It'll uh, live out the rest of its days getting abused in a way it was designed for. Okay, so I got all three switches all nice and cleaned up like this. And uh, I'm gonna just get a little deoxid in there, make sure that they're uh, working just dandy. Look at that just disgusting mess. Now, it probably worked. But that's horrible, man. It is what I would expect from somebody who would use a wire nut and think that it was a perfectly acceptable way to put a battery in a guitar, though. The very first thing that I did to put this all back together was put these little wires that screw right down into uh, the body. And what it is, it looks like they shielded the cavity and then they did the paint job over top and kind of carved away and so this is all supposed to ground together so it all comes out in the back and then there's a another ground that needs to go in there to hook everything up to the electronics i'll go right here and that all gets soldered onto this little tab right here so they can get screwed into the side there now if there's any one thing that i do not want to do it's get solder spatter on the finish that I just spent so much time on. And that's why I'm covering it with this thing right here. Let's see. kind of rest this thing against here well that was way easier than I thought it was gonna be well it was a long road to hoe but uh, here we are got those jacks and pickups all in there I sure would be a lot happier if the white on this one wasn't worn off but well, you know, it each his life, a little rain must fall, right? Now, we've got all this stuff right here just uh, sitting there waiting and ready. But, I don't want to solder around this fire crackle paint job. I mean, it's got enough issues as it is. So, it's time to uh, take a piece of paper, put it down on here, 
and just make some indentions. That'll do. Poke some holes, stick the controls in here, start soldering things up, and then transfer it all inside the guitar. And boy, oh boy, has this thing gone from zero to hero. You know, that looks great. There is one small problem that I ran into. When we look at the electronics here, and you can see that that is wildly different from what it was. In fact, uh, let's take a minute to remember what it looked like. Yeah, this is great. This is absolutely fantastic. There's just one problem. I had to clean up one of those switches and this one right here, the middle one, right there. That thing is stripped. Try as I might, it won't bite. Those are single pole double throw switches. The only one that I have that's black has this little uh, round bat tip on it. But those right there are flat bat. These are double pull, double throw. Nobody will notice that from the inside, but they will notice that weird round bat. Because of that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of cheat. I'm not gonna put the washer on. I'm gonna just put this nut on here, nice and loose. And we'll wait for the replacement switch that I have coming out. It's not that noticeable unless I point it out to you. And once again, this, this part looks great. More importantly, it works. In addition to the body looking totally awesome, the neck also cleaned up very nice too. Now there are a couple little scuffs, things like that, that I wasn't able to get out. Now for the most part, it looks really great. So I'm pretty happy with it. Now that we got all that out of the way, let's do something actually fun and put the neck on the guitar. Boy, did this thing clean up nice and it looks good too. And that's not a mistake because this thing was designed to look cool and be deceptive because it says Fort Worth, Texas. This guitar was made in Japan. These screws have seen much better days. So I'm just gonna coat these things a little bit, just the tip with some beeswax. Notice how I tighten this like I was doing a tire. It wasn't just back and it wasn't in a square or anything like that. It's kind of like a uh, little tic-tac-toe, crisscross applesauce there, baby. Yeah, you can see quite obviously that this thing was designed to be at an angle. That's the way they meant it to be. It's got to be so that you've got some up pull on this JT6. Well, it's time to put this thing back together. But before we do, Let's just take a real close look at how far this thing has come. I mean, it really looks great. I suspect it's going to play and sound great too. She's done. She's absolutely beautiful. Plays like a dream. There's just one problem. The bushings on this thing are pretty worn out to where when you put it in, it doesn't tend to stay where you want it to for very long. I want it to be just a little less, a little less flippy floppy than that. I'm gonna share a secret with you. Eh, maybe not so much as a secret as a trick. So this is just regular old Teflon tape, like you would get at you know Home Depot or something like that. And I'm just gonna put just a little bit, not much, about two wraps. Nice and tight. You notice that I did them underneath that last bushing, you know, like kind of covering part of that last bushing. There we go, a couple wraps. Much better. So let's hear how it sounds, shall we? First, we'll go clean. Neck pickup. roll this off here it's like kind of a little bit of a boost okay middle pickup Yeah, 
behind the bridge. <laughs> But that's not really what this guitar is all about. So let's find something that's a little bit more tone appropriate, shall we? This thing really is a lot of fun. That neck sounds great. Bridge sounds really good too. <laughs> I'm going to have a lot of fun spending a lot of time with this guitar. I got to say though, this thing took forever to do. I started March 19th of 2022 and it is now early January of 2023. I'm going to talk to you guys later so that I can go and uh, plug this thing into the big rig and have some fun. So until next time, this has been Eddie Kernan for Rexy Lab, making the world a better place one completely abused and neglected 80s dream machine at a time.